Hi, today's episode of We Are Only One is brought to you by mountgox.com, M-T-G-O-X.com, and The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. And the site for that is thankyoeconomybook.com. Hi everyone, I'm Jude Byrne, the host of We Are Only One. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about the importance of intuition, following your intuition and what happens when you don't. We've got a great guest who's an intuitive life coach, Jennifer Alhasha, and uh, we're going to be chatting with her. But I followed my intuition today and it told me... um, Many of you know that I'm a sound healer and I do drumming and Reiki and ceremonies. And I thought today we'd open the show with a little drumming meditation to kind of clear out anything that might be an obstacle to our full enjoyment of the day and to listening to our intuition and listening to our heart. So this is a buffalo drum with dolphins on it and it's used in a lot of ceremonies uh, to the Native Americans Buffalo is the most sacred of all the drums. So uh, just sit back. If you can close your eyes, we're going to just, if you have anything in your body or anything uh, that's hurting or causing any kind of discomfort, just let the sound go to that spot and it's going to dissolve it. So enjoy. Here we go. officially introduce Jennifer Alhasha, who's an intuitive coach. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a thrill to be here with you today, Ju. Oh, it's our pleasure, Jennifer. And I wonder if you could tell us uh, what led to your becoming an intuitive coach. Well, I was always an intuitive little girl, and I can remember sort of knowing things and experiencing things on a different level in my heart and feeling them. But as an adult, I grew up and I stuffed my feelings, I stuffed my sadness, and I lost a lot of that intuition connection. And I, you know, I was a young woman working an office job and I smoked and I drank and I partied and I lived it up and I didn't have an inner life. I didn't have a spiritual connection and I lost all track of that. So I was keeping busy on the wheel of life and just really drowning myself and my sorrows that I was so un- cut off from, you know, I was so cut off from my own pain and numbing my senses. So I didn't even know that I was missing a spiritual life, you know, and it was been mm-hmm. through my own awakening to that, that I recovered my intuitive nature and got back to my inner child and the senses that I always experienced then. Uh huh. Yeah. It's easy sometimes to get distracted and, uh, lose track Mm. Um, but uh, tell me how you use it as a guide uh, you know in your life sure well now I'm at the point now that I'm really tapped in and tuned into my intuition that I use it almost to make every decision you know from what I'll eat to what train I'll take so just for example this morning I had in my mind the route I would take that I got from hop stop to come here to the studio today And then as I was walking and I was going to turn right, I heard, no, go straight. Take the 7 instead of the F. So I walked and went to the 7 and I didn't know why. And sometimes that's the interesting part about it is you don't know why. You know, you don't know what you'll either be getting or missing by making that turn or not making that turn. But I ended up taking the 7 and had a wonderful mariachi band grace me on that train. And (laughs) it got me really excited and awake and... There was a stand-up bass on the train, and I loved it, and it got my foot tapping, and 
who knows? Maybe I was just supposed to have this music. Maybe I was supposed to get down here when I did. Um, got me to a cafe, and I was sitting drinking a coffee, and Ricky Gervais from the office walked by, and we had a little moment of eye contact. So it was like oh, everything that I did today led me to that, and I'm sure I would have had other experiences had I taken the F, but it was just like that, just listening in day-to-day -day moments what to eat, where to go, what to wear. I mean, for me now, everything comes from my heart and tuning in instead of my mind. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you hit a couple of things. When we do listen and we're sure. in the flow, like you ran across a friend because you took that direction. And um, I remember the uh, Cel Celestine prophecy mm. where he said, when you follow the flow people are going to appear that have messages for you and and life is going to unfold in a magical way if, mm -hmm. if we're open to that and we're tuned into that um, and there are many ways like i use the drumming and sound to kind of clear when it gets a um, little uh, energetic obstacle course to clear it and I wonder, what do you do? You know, you said you were living a wild life and kind of numbing yourself out a little mm -hmm. bit. And I think many of us have gone through that phase in life. <laughs> um, and what could you share with our listeners about what led you to uh, fine tune your, your listening to the intuitive voice? Sure. Well, I think it was just meditation is the first thing that I started with, you know, um, Part of my journey was that I got diagnosed with cancer and was awakened to this huge door of spirituality um, in order to heal myself. I needed to heal my soul and heal my inner ache. You know, what was the original pain that was lost? And through that, I started exploring different parts of spirituality and meditation was the first stop on that train for me. So Buddhism and meditation and just sitting. I mean, it had been years since I sat and lit a candle and listened to music and you know just opened to that um, and then mm -hmm. it's gotten more and more progressive I think as you do it more you'll hear more you know at first you might, I would sit there and think well this, nothing's really happening this is uncomfortable what the heck you know I don't understand what what's the benefit of this right what am I doing <laughs> down here but then I would find a right CD and you know the right mm -hmm. piano music maybe would open me up to oh gosh I really loved playing the piano and just certain things would just open me deeper, deeper, deeper. And like everybody always says, it's a practice, right? I mean, it's something that comes more and more the more you do it. So it's like, and there are days where I will forget. I mean, I'll wake up, I'll jump out of bed, I'll grab the laptop in bed and read email and forget to start my day with that tuning in. And then it like doesn't feel good, right? It starts to feel uncomfortable and I'm, I'm not listening. I'm listening to the ego and the ego is driving me in a really different direction than my heart might. So then I'll just take a bath and um, that's a really important step for me too. As a Pisces and as an intuitive person and an empathic person, like I mm -hmm. pick up energy mm -hmm. from everyone and from everything and all around me. So if I'll spend too much time with technology, I really need to take a bath and cleanse and with mm -hmm. salt water and just really get that out. Um, and then sit down in meditation and it's like, it can be a real exercise for me to not go right back on the computer, right? Like, because that's, we're so plugged in and we're so technologically focused to say, stay down there. Stay down there until you hear something, right? That's what I do, until I hear something move. And then it'll be like, then I'll get these divine ideas, right? Like, change this copy on your website. I mean, really important messages come to me that I would miss. You know, sometimes when you're trying to find a book title or you're trying to write some copy for your website and you're you're really pushing the river is what I would say and you don't have the answer and you're like working it a little too hard if I just take a step back and take a bath and then sit down the answer comes to me like a gift from heaven you know mm -hmm. so that listening has really been important and it's just developed more and more I think the more you listen the more you're talked to I yes um there's an old native program uh, proverb uh, in a program that I, um, a prosperity consciousness program that I took. Uh, and it says, um, uh, be, be still, be silent, or, or your tongue will make you deaf. Mm. You know? And so when we 
when we stop our talk, our chatter, and, and listen, um, and like you said, put, put ourselves in a space that's conducive to, to listening and getting that guidance, we, we all have it inside. I think we forget about it sometimes, mm. um, <clears throat> that we have it, all the answers that we need when, when we get in touch with the divine source uh, and the guidance. Um, but I, I find the intuitive uh, road to be um, the, one of the highest, uh, mm. you know, and in, intimately connected with the path of the heart. Um, and um, I wondered when you, you know, you say you are an intuitive coach, how do you tune into people to help them? What do you do personally when you're counseling somebody? Well, when I, um, that's a great question. Thank you. So when I meet someone or um, I'll do it over the phone, I'll either meet with them in person or do it over the phone. What I usually do is just have a conversation like we might be having mm -hmm. and they'll uh, describe their problem or their issue. So you might come to me and say you want to work on birthing a book, right? And then we'll start talking about the book and what that looks like to you. And then I'll get information sort of from my knowing, right? I'll know, well, these are the steps in like the life path you should take. But then I'll also simultaneously be hearing information. And the only way I know how to say it is to say it like that, like I'll hear Mm -hmm. a piece of information and it won't necessarily make sense to me like I might hear well what about California or something you know and like then I'll if the person is in a place I might say to them well I'm hearing something would you like me to share that with you because there are some clients you know you work with who are very open and very spiritual and very um, deep into the woo woo if you will you know like very <laughs> open to that yeah exactly and they want that you know they're hungry for that and they work with me because that's what they want and then there's some people who are tipping their dipping their toe in that water right and I might say well, I'm hearing something you know and I that was a big learning for me is to because I'm always getting information right because I'm empathic like I might meet someone and see them and know things about them instantaneously but I don't share that with them you know I mean so it's been a learning yes. for me how to work with that energy and to to respect the information and to ask and therefore it is given you know wait for wait for the permission so um, it's on two levels, you know, I think I, I coach people with what I have learned, um, what I've gone through and the wisdom that I've picked up on my path of study and then also my intuitive. So it's a combination of the intuition and then the life coaching from a perspective of study and wisdom that has been gained on my path and through my experiences. Mm -hmm. Like yourself, I'm also an, an empath and um, mm. um, Bruce. Uh, the CEO of Only One TV, and I uh, heard um, a speaker who wrote a book called Emotional Freedom, and she talked about different personality types and how key it was energetically to know your type yeah. and empaths in particular. She said, you will get a lot of messages and you need to be careful uh, not to overload your circuits. Mm. You know, and um, I, I found that really good advice for people who really are tuned into uh, to getting that guidance to be mindful of to take a break. Like if you're doing intuitive work, mm -hmm. you know, it is like you said, uh, uh, take a bath either either actually physically or metaphysically and cleanse yourself. Um, Definitely. And um, something else that. Um, struck me too how you start your day is key you know uh, we here at the studio of course love the internet <laughs> and it's a wonderful source of connection all over the world with people and uh, sharing with lovely guests like you and yeah. you know every week we are sending out good vibrations to people that we wouldn't necessarily meet in another way but we also know that balance is really key sure. Uh, in life and to do things that are like for me getting out in nature is mm. very key connecting with the earth and and uh, really feeling the earth and going barefoot I mean there was a lot of wisdom in earth wisdom mm. that is showing up now that we're disconnected you know with the balance of our, our natural ways and um, I think that helps people. I know it helps me to get back to my intuition, 
you know, is to not get so caught up, but to, to start the day centered with a prayer or a meditation or some physical uh, activity outside if possible, mm. you know, to feel that pulse. <clears throat> yes, and I was recently read something about earthing, which is this whole movement where there are cultures who don't have any illness because the indigenous people go barefoot. So, you know, if we can ground ourselves and like really take your shoes off, get your feet yes. in the grass, you know, yes. or on the sand, even five minutes a day, like the health benefits to that. I mean, there's something about neutralizing the magnetic charge. I'm not sure about the science, but just the like the grounding and that that touching into our primal nature. It's both good for health and for our spirit. So it's a win, win, win. Yes, yeah. and, and I, I did. I've heard some doctors speak of that. Uh, <clears throat> how key that is one simple thing of going barefoot yeah. like that, that really uh, kind of reconnects us mm. and uh and can help and that part of why there are some challenges are the the materials in the shoes are not letting us get through and ha making that connection so we're disconnecting you know from our one of our home bases mm. you know and simple things like that but uh, you know, if we're not mindful or tuned in, uh, we might not know that. Yeah, and it's like yeah. sometimes in New York you can feel like, you know, it's far away, right? But it's really not. I mean, even if you just hug a tree, literally, like touch the tree, yes. they'll impart their wisdom and they'll impart that groundedness. So sometimes, you know, I'll stop on the street and like hug the tree and, <laughs> you know, sometimes care if somebody's watching and other times not. But it's like it really does ground us and help us remember from whence we came and you know I was a little girl in Iowa I grew up playing in my garden and playing with the ladybugs and making mud pies and like having my hands in the dirt and I didn't remember that for years I mean it took me years to remember that I missed that and that experience so mm -hmm. that has been a huge part for me is reconnecting with that nature yes I, I, I go to Central Park every day if I can and Wonderful. and uh, I just you know, talk to the trees and, mm. and the rocks. I mean, feeling the life pulse, like uh, only one TV, we are only one, is, is all sentient beings, all mm. uh, the life force of everything, you know, giving thanks to the earth and, uh, you know, not just the two-legged yes. <laughs> and the four-legged friends that we have, you know, but um, the just the beauty of it all and I, I think New York is such an amazing city with vitality and creativity and um, it goes at such a pace sometimes that we can get distracted from mm. from the center of reconnecting and uh, so we encourage all our New York listeners <laughs> go have a treat today yeah. or, Say hi to a flower. <laughs> <laughs> or a dog or a squirrel or a bird, you know, whatever you see out there. Right. Whatever you come across in your path. I mean, that's what like you said, we're all one. All of us. Yes. Yes. I have a very good friend who's, who's working on a book uh, on the benefits of uh, juice feasting, mm. um, Dr. Eddie. And she is also... Um, kind of a, uh, she's a holistic nutritionist, but she's also a, a life coach. And she has a phrase called fill your love bucket. That's her trademark, your love bucket. And doing things like, like that, um, really feeling the connection with nature, yeah. um, being mindful, like simple things we can do uh, every day. What gives you joy? You know, making it a point out of your busy day to connect with things that get you back in touch with your inner child mm. and and uh, the purity of of the joy of the beauty of of who we are. Definitely. You know? And uh, um, one of the things that um, you also do is you. I understand you work with your sister. Uh, uh, you have a, is it a talk show or a... It's an online advice column. So it's uh -huh. called Dear Soul Sister. So my sister, Laura, lives in Seattle, Washington. And she called me one day out of the blue and said, Oh my God, I have this idea. We should write a spiritual advice column. And then it just, it just took off from there. And it was so natural. And it was, you know, we both sort of awakened 
in different ways. I awakened through cancer and she always says motherhood was my cancer. Like it awakened her to her anger and to her emotions and to the things that she hadn't been feeling. And then we both went all along our paths, but then just this earlier this year we started Dear Soul Sisters. So we give inspired, insightful, and informed advice to readers so they can write in for free. We're like Dear Abby of the New Millennium and people can send in their conundrums, anything from, you know, prosperity questions to difficulties dealing with guilt, um, some Sunday school, we had a Sunday school situation that we helped someone with recently. So whatever people are dealing with, I mean, there's a lot of people struggling with prosperity consciousness and how to bird that into their lives. There's a lot of people sort of being restructured in life, right? And how do they get going if they've lost a job or how do they go after their big dreams? So we've been helping people and it's really been wonderful. Can you, I, I want to stop you there because sure. I'm sure you have a list. I'd like you to comment further on prosperity consciousness because that is very challenging for sure. people. Um, what do you say to people right now? So what we said um, to the latest person, her question was, where's my prosperity, right? Looking around the world, it's like she's done a lot of inner work. She changed her spending habits. Maybe she's not accumulating as much debt as she used to, but she still hasn't birth her prosperity in a way that she would like to and so we sort of talked about how prosperity isn't just your bank account and it's not just your credit score that it's a consciousness right like even mm -hmm. if the economy might be in the toilet globally there's still people making money right and what is that what do they got going on that you don't right so like what is their secret you know that yes. they've got so we talked about starting from a place of gratitude really having her look in her life and make a list of three things that she was grateful for now, right? Mm -hmm. And to step, to get into that flow of gratitude really opens you to like everything you do have. Because I think sometimes when we're thinking about prosperity, we can get into a lack of consciousness, just thinking, I don't have this yet, right? Mm -hmm. But it was like, so we started with the gratitude and then to just make a list, like a list of maybe five things that prosperity getting ahead means to you. Like to some people it might mean a big house and to other people it might mean traveling. So what is it, what does it uniquely look like to you? I think it's really important. So make a list of five to 10 things that are really important to you um, to have, you know, a travel fund or an apartment or whatever it is that you would like to birth in your life. And then you can start defining it on your terms. Great. I want to, um, Take a break, speaking sure. of prosperity consciousness, to, <laughs> to, to thank our sponsors. And then I of want to course. get back to gratitude and the high vibration that brings in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, without further ado, we would like to thank Mount Gox, NTGOX.com. Uh, Mount Gox is the largest online exchange service for Bitcoins. They now take euros, uh, the British pound, the Australian dollar, and uh, 16 plus currencies at the moment. And you can, you can buy them from the comfort of your own home. And I highly recommend them. I use them personally myself. Full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> and the Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. That's just to spell the author first, Gary, V-A-Y space N-E-R space C-H-U-K. And the website for that is thankyoueconomybook.com. And he has his finger on the pulse of the shift that's happening, talking about consciousness how businesses to be competitive right now are going back to making an emotional connection with the customer like our grandparents did to build loyalty to provide better service and he's got many ideas he's combining the traditional ways with the modern uh, social media and how to market your business so we highly recommend that as well i want to thank him for the thank you economy. So now we're back to gratitude. Ooh. Gratitude has so much energy, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. It shifts everything. And it's 
Seems so simple, right? If you wake up every morning and you write down three things for which you are thankful and you do that at the end of the day as well, you can really bookend your day and say like, here's where I started, right? And then here's, I think the Obamas do this around their dinner table, right? They do roses and thorns, but every day they do something that really good happened and they share that as a family and talk about Oh, neat. Isn't that cool? To That's say, very like, cool. What are we thankful for at the end of the day? You know, and yes. instead of saying like, gosh, all these things didn't go wrong for me today, just say like, let's talk about the three things that did. You know, I mm -hmm. got this piece of business accomplished on my website. I found really great food at the store. You know, I had a great conversation with my friends. Simple things like that can shift your energy into love. I mean, and that's what I've been feeling lately, and I know a lot of people are talking about this now, there are really two choices. There's love or fear, and that's it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. There's love or there's fear. So mm -hmm. what can get you in to fear is thinking about what you don't have, thinking about what didn't go right, thinking about what you need and you would be happy if you only had it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can get into gratitude, it drops you into love. I mean, it drops you into, I have this, I have these friends, I have this bounty of goodness that I've forgotten about. So for me, that's what really helps is to remember everything I do have instead of focusing on what I don't. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> and how easy that is to shift and, mm. and to choose again and to look at whatever it is that is a blessing. And there are so many that we take for granted, even having mm. you know, running water, how much of the the world doesn't have that clean drinking water. Um, but I, I so agree with you, and I've, I've heard uh, several um, people say, to really raise your vibration, take your wildest fantasy or your dream or what you feel your heart's desire, what would really truly fulfill your heart's desire, mm -hmm. and to put yourself in that is the next day after it, the frame of mind that it's just happened to you. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel? And you feel fantastic, you know, and you feel so happy. And what it does, as we're saying, it raises your vibration to a point where you're in a different space. You're not as dense it, when, when we're complaining or out of sorts. We're at a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. And so we we're more dense and so we, we create obstacles to our good by our attitude and when we are thankful the gratitude and we're seeing that it's happening we're vibrating in a much higher place and and it's things happen quicker that way mm -hmm. and you draw your good to you you know and it's it, it seems like a simple thing that we all have at our disposal yet we're not tuned into it you know, again, we get distracted. Sure. But um, I had something happen to me recently, and I wanted to share it with you. Oh, great. <laughs> um, I had a situation that could have potentially been very adversarial uh, mm. in my life. And, um, of course, initially there was a reaction on a denser note. <laughs> yeah. And then, and it's something that you and I talked about a while ago. We were talking about intuition. And uh, I decided to, instead of looking out for my good, I prayed for the highest good for both parties involved, mm. you know. And what happened was a very amicable solution. Oh, wonderful. And I know, energetically, had I not uh, been blessed to be in that frame of mind, it would have had a very different outcome. It would have been much more stressful, mm. and it might not have had the same benefits to both parties. Mm. And, you know, um, and it was something that you and I discussed about mutuality and, and how key it is in life uh, when... We are connected and realizing our interconnections that, that it's for the good of us, not mm. the good of me or the good of you, it, but it's we, our only one. It's, it's for our good, you know? And um, that was just, uh, just happened to me two days ago. Oh, and I'm so happy to hear that. Very, very exciting, yeah. That reminds me of when my husband and I moved back to New York 
we moved here like without furniture or jobs and we didn't have anything that a person might need to get an apartment in New York but we were trying and we found this one apartment that we really liked and we couldn't get it because we didn't have um, a guarantor that was willing to step up and so we lost this one apartment and I was I was attached to it for a day and then I just realized like well, it's not our apartment, you know, just not meant to be. So then we went about subletting once we realized like, okay, we don't have these things. We'll just sublet from someone and found this apartment in Jackson Heights and went out to look at it. And it was, I mean, it was so divine. We walked in and the apartment was all green and the woman said, oh, it's green for prosperity. And I just <laughs> knew like, oh, I was in the right place. And she was somebody who was tired of winter. She just needed to go live on the beach and go back to Florida and she needed somebody to take her whole apartment now and she sold us everything in her apartment for 400 bucks so like bed furniture wow. everything pots pans I mean everything and then we sublet it and we had enough cash to prepay for the nine months of the sublet and nobody said like you don't have jobs you don't have receipts nothing it's just like cash and we got everything we needed and it was so divine because it was like she needed to give this stuff to somebody right she couldn't take it she couldn't deal with it anymore mm -hmm. she had to go like the next day go mm -hmm. and we just happened upon her and like there were books i mean there were this, the millionaire mind was in there there were spiritual books she was like have you read the secret you know and <laughs> it was amazing to me that like this person was waiting for us as we were looking for her so it was like mutually beneficial and we got what we needed and she got out of town and it's just such a wonderful like if you can focus on the highest good right the highest good yes was that we got this apartment and that she got to leave yes so it it we have the ability to tune into that yeah. and and you know choose again i find that very liberating you know to uh say okay not this way this way Exactly. In, a, yeah. in each moment, right? Like yes. we can choose anew. It's an opportunity. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to just go back for a moment to your health challenge because I know a lot of women especially um, deal with uh, the challenge of breast cancer. Sure. And um, what did you find most helpful for you with that? Was it the meditation or... Um, did you have a dramatic change in your lifestyle? I did. I mean, I what awakened me was I had a call with a psychic, actually. Uh -huh. You know, and I was never open to this. I was kind of a cynical person at this point in my life. And but when you're faced with a diagnosis, right, that's not very good, you kind of it's a hail mary, right? Like I'll try anything at this point. So right. and you know, and it was wonderful. I mean, it was two days into it, and she just said, "This isn't about you dying. This is about you." deciding whether or not you want to live and for me that's where I was you know um, that was my choice and so that was like the kick in the butt and I thought well of course I want to choose to live don't I and then I had to work through that you know really work through my feeling like if life wasn't worth living what was I doing here and that mm -hmm. was my path is to decide that I wanted to be here and to decide that the way I had created my life wasn't fulfilling. So, I mean, it, it took me a long time. I mean, part of my journey was, you know, to go through the traditional treatment of chemo and radiation, and I had a lumpectomy, and to go through nine months of, you know, really, really intense medical stuff that started, like, the next week. I mean, you don't, there's not much time mm -hmm. um, in that process. So it's, it's like a roller coaster ride. You just kind of get on and hang on. Mm -hmm. But then the other piece was to really... I had to grieve the life that I had to let go of, and I know that might sound crazy, but it's like if you're if you're in a life where you're, all your friends go out and all your friends drink and all your friends party, and that's all I really knew for a long time. Mm -hmm. I had to grieve that person, right? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and trade coffee, you know, for going out drinking and walk around the lake. And some relationships didn't survive that period, and others mm -hmm. grew and blossomed in ways that I'm so blessed and grateful for. Um, just changing my whole life i mean pretty much it was a slow transformation in some ways but if you look back i mean it was it was a quantum leap is what i would say it was it was a quantum leap and then the spiritual piece kept coming back kept coming back and that deepened and deepened and deepened and you know i went through all kinds of classes and i've just studied 
all different things. But I think for me, it's like really tuning in to your heart again. It's like mm -hmm. disease is really just a symptom, an external manifestation of something going on. And, you know, cancer is a very loaded subject and there's all kinds of things going on from the environment, you know, to things we eat, things are in our world, who knows what causes it, you know, and mm -hmm. for me, I didn't, I didn't focus on any of that. I just focused on here it is, I've got it, and now what can I do? What power can I seize? Because this is my choice now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I found really helpful was to completely ignore statistics and to completely mm -hmm. ignore all the fearful information that's out there on the internet. And some people really need to know what's in the medicine they're taking. Some people really need to know like what are the possible side effects of this treatment. I just went on faith. I mean, I completely believed that I was healed and saw myself as healed and then just said, I have to walk these steps. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just going to walk these steps and get through it. And it was nine months. I mean, it was very, very difficult, very, very brutal. I mean, chemo is one of the hardest things I can imagine going through, you know, and to just to just focus on it though like you know like they would put a chemical in me that was like red dye number five right that you might dye your shoes with and that kills pretty much everything in you but i just choose to look at it as like this magic lemonade right i didn't look at it mm. and i didn't mm -hmm. think about it so for me it was a complete mental choice and a leap of faith mm -hmm. and a really tuning into like seeing the end result right seeing it as positive without ever holding the option that it couldn't be you know I sort of mm -hmm. just said well that's it I'm better right I just got to go through this to get there right so that was what really helped me beautiful yeah thank you beautiful and look at you now look at me now you know it's been <laughs> seven years and even now I don't seven years seven years I don't I'm not the kind of person who participates so much in that life and in that world. I mean, for me, it was a catalyst, right? And Understand. I know some people, it's mm -hmm. really helped them to stay active in that community and do walks and do things. And I totally appreciate and support that path. But for me, it's been a catalyst and the spirituality mm -hmm. for me has been the most important thing that came out of that. So really tuning into my nature and who I am and, and to stay focused on that, right? Because it can be a nice, wonderful reminder for me. Like, here's what happened in one instance when you didn't stay connected to your heart and you don't want to lose that again, you know? Yes. For me, that's what it serves is a beautiful reminder to stay tuned in. Well, that's a wonderful message too. And thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, and also showing that you got quiet and you followed your own guidance and mm. you had faith that and no doubt there we go yeah no coming doubt. out on the other side just fine thank you yes. yeah i think that's that's wonderful and we we all have that inner wisdom mm. and uh we we can get in touch with it um, using a variety of things we've been talking about today sure. and listening to our heart and a quiet voice and doing healthy things, eating healthy things, mm. meditating, whatever it is that gets you in the zone, mm. you know. Um, uh, for me, uh, as I mentioned before, um, drumming does that, uh, prayer and meditation, mm. uh, meditating out in nature, and just sitting there, sitting on a bench or walking through the park and just observing all yeah. of it you know feeling it that we are all one <laughs> and we're all interconnected yes. you know it's um it's a real treat and I'd, I'd like to um kind of do a little meditation to to close us out oh, that'd be beautiful. Um, i wanted would you share your site with people um sure i'm on jennifer alhasa J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, Alhasa, A-L-H-A-S-A dot com. And you can come there and you can see about intuitive coaching. You can see about Get Glowing, my radio show, and also a link to Dear Soul Sisters. So hope to see you, Jennifer, Alhasa dot com. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, glowing. That's Get it. glowing. Glowing. Get glowing. That's Jennifer's <laughs> tagline. I love it. 
thank you. So, shall we glow with the little? Let's glow with let's the glow. Let's glow. <laughs>